Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Lauren and I am a craft educator here at Makers Gonna Learn and today we are going to be bringing you the Cricut hacks that you need for embroidery that you didn't even know that you needed. In today's video, we are going to be learning a basic embroidery stitch as well as how we can use our Cricut to create a pattern to embroider on any type of material that you would like. We're now going to go overhead and jump right into everything you're going to need to get this project started. Now that we're overhead, as you can see, there's really not a whole lot of materials that we need for this project. Our main material that we're going to be working with today is going to be the printable stick and stitch. Now this is something that you can actually print the design from your printer onto this, but we are going to be using the Cricut pins to create a design and then we're going to lay this on the article of clothing that we want. So as you can see today we're going to be embroidering some shorts. You do not have to do jeans. You can do other material, but I will say if you're going to do like a t-shirt or a t-shirt type material, you are going to need a backer for that or a stabilizer. And what that's going to do is because cotton likes to stretch a lot. As you can see, this denim is, is actually a stretchy denim as well, but we're able to stretch that on the hoop so it doesn't move around as much as like a cotton t-shirt. So if you do like a t-shirt or a cotton t-shirt, make sure that you do use a stabilizer on the back that way that it keeps it nice and flat. Um, obviously you're going to need some type of article of clothing. We have an embroidery needle. This is something that you can get at your local craft store or Amazon. We have embroidery floss. You are going to use whatever color that you desire. Today we're going to be using a sage green and a hot pink for our palm leaves. And then you're going to need an embroidery hoop. We're going to be using Cricut pins and a fabric grip mat. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be fabric grip. Actually, this fabric grip mat is pretty light on the tack. So we're just using this today. Um, if you have a standard grip mat and you don't have a fabric grip mat, you can do that and just tape the edges of your stick and stitch down to your mat so that it doesn't move when it starts, when the Cricut starts riding or tracing that design on the printable stick and stitch. Another thing that's going to come in very helpful when you are creating your design is going to be a measuring tape. That way you can measure the area that you are wanting to embroider and that measurement you can transfer over to design space so that when your Cricut starts to draw it on your printable stick and stitch, it has it perfectly laid out for you. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into design space so that we can start the process of teaching you how to create your design. Now that we are over here in Cricut Design Space, as you can see, I already have the design that I want, but I'm going to hide this and I'm going to show you step by step how you're going to be able to create this. So we're going to go over here to the Makers Gonna Learn website and you're going to click Cut Files. From there, you're just going to search the word leaf, which I have already done. Um, you can choose whatever pattern you want. I actually started off trying to use a sunset on the back pocket, but for with these shorts specifically, it just did not work. You can do um, any type of floral leaves. However, I am only going to be showing you one stitch today. Now, if learning embroidery is something you want to do, there are multiple, multiple stitches, but we're just going to go over one stitch. Um, so I'm going to use this monstera leaf right here. You are going to download that onto your computer. So you're going to click this little cloud icon and as you can see it downloads down here as a zip file. Now this is a PNG so it's technically a print and cut image. However we're going to turn it into a basic cut once we get back over to design space. So we're going to go over to design space. We're going to go to upload. I already have this upload, but I do want to walk you all through this process. We're going to upload the image. We're going to click browse. We're going to scroll down and find the PNG. Here we have leaf two, leaf, leaf, leaf two, same thing. We're going to open this up. Now we're going to click complex. And as you can see, it comes up with the complex image. We're going to apply and continue. Now here is where you have the option to turn it from a print and cut image to a basic cut. 
So if you wanted to print this image onto the stick and stitch from your printer, you can do that. So the stick and stitch is a washable medium. So even if you did print it and it come up like this, that's going to wash away. So it's really just going to waste a lot of ink. So we're just going to be choosing the basic cut image. I just wanted you all to realize that you can print it on the stick and stitch, but it's not necessary. So from there, we are going to upload that. We're going to select it and add it to our canvas. Now this does pull up very, very large. So if you go up to the top to the size, here we're just going to size this down. We're going to start at five inches. Now it is locked, so it's gonna automatically size the other side down. Looks like we have two, so we're going to delete this one out. So now we have a leaf that is five inches in width and five and three point five point three four inches in height. So now what we're going to do, we're gonna go overhead real quick. Now, this is gonna really depend on where you want your design. As you can see, I've already started on this side. Now, I'm not gonna add anything on this side. I'm just gonna show you how to do this. This was just so I started this so it wouldn't be such a long process to finish this whole thing. So what we're gonna do is we are going to measure how much space that we can take up on the leg of these shorts. So if you wanted to do it on the front leg, you can. You can turn it around if you wanted to do something on the pocket. Either way, you're going to measure and see how much room you have to work with, and that's how big your design is going to be. So once we've measured and we've determined how large of an area we have to work with, so we're gonna go with about six and a half or so, um, I'd say comfortably by about like five. So once we've measured, we're gonna go back to design space and we're going to maybe size this down just a tad and then we are going to duplicate it because for this design, I have two monster leaves and I'm going to change the color of the second one to green. And I actually wanted to size this one even smaller than the first one and then I'm going to rotate it to the side just a little bit. And this is where you can line up these leaves however you want. Um, I'm going to, I think I want to rotate this one down just a little bit. And then we'll bring this one about right here. Either way, this is where it's going to be a personal preference how you want to do this, but the end result is going to be the same. So once you have positioned your images, now if you can do multiple, you can do um, three or four. So if there were other leaves you wanted to add in, that is fine, you can do that. But what we're fixing to do next, I want you to remember that you can only do with two images at a time. So what I'm going to do, because really and truly, so let's turn both of these into a pin function because they are gonna be a pin function by the time this is over. So we're gonna just go ahead and turn both of these into a pin function. So as you can see, this middle portion right here is very convoluted. It's very, um, has a lot going on because as of right now, this bottom leaf, this Cricut recognizes, okay, I'm going to draw this whole bottom leaf. So if you do that, you're going to have these lines going through the middle of the leaf that you want on top. And that's not something that we want. So we're going to change these back into basic cut. So as you can see, we're, we want this top leaf to be solid and we just want the lines that we see in between and we can zoom in. We just want these lines to kind of poke through and not run through the top of this, through the whole part of this leaf. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select both of these leaves and we're gonna go down here to the bottom right and we're going to click slice. Now, it's gonna make it look all funky, but just hold on with me. Do not go and click and drag any of this. Please do not, we're gonna work from our uh, layers panel over here. We're not gonna be clicking and dragging. So this portion, if you, 
we can, we, I can't zoom in, but this portion is our bottom leaf with the top leaf out. This is what we want to keep. What we do not want to keep is the portion that is going to be laying under our top leaf. So this is part of the top leaf. This is why we change the colors. The green is part of the top leaf and this green is part of the top leaf. What we do not want is this part of the black leaf. So we're going to delete this out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this slice result as well as this slice result. From there, we are going to weld them together. And that puts our leaf back to its original shape. Now, if I move this leaf, you can see that there is a perfect outline of where this leaf is supposed to go. And that is how we're, it, the Cricut is going to recognize, hey, I don't need to draw where this leaf goes. I just need to draw around it. So we're gonna go back so we can move that back. From there, we're going to select them both, go up to operation, we're going to change it to pin function. Now you can really see how there are no lines that are gonna be drawn through the top part of this leaf. So we're gonna select the top part and change it to the color that we want. We're gonna be using a hot pink, or we'll just use raspberry, and then we're gonna select the bottom portion and that is going to be our green. So we're just gonna select sour apple and that is the color scheme that we're gonna be going for. Now, the next thing that you need to do, select them both. We are going to click attach. We are not going to weld. We are just going to attach them, okay? Attach is what you need here, not weld. So let's show you what, if you detach it, and let's say we select these both and we weld this together, what it's going to do, it's going to make it all one image and that is not something we want. We don't want to weld, never weld. Not with this, so we're just going to select them both. Again, bottom right hand corner, attach. From there, you can see that our size, remember we said we could work with about a six and a half um, by five, six and a half in width, five by height. We are a little over the five, but that's okay. We're way under that six and a half. So now what we're gonna do is we are just going to click make it. As you can see, it puts it on our mat for us. We're going to click continue. Once we have selected our maker, we are going to just choose heavy cardstock because this is the pin function. So it is not going to matter really what material because it's still gonna be able to draw on that. So as you can see, this says load sour apple pin into clamp A. We're going to go over to our Cricut. We're gonna take our Cricut pin. We are going to load it into clamp A. And then we're going to go overhead. We are going to put our stick and stitch on our mat. And then we are gonna head back over to our Cricut and load this into our Cricut. Once it is ready, we're going to click play. Once your Cricut has finished with the first color, it's going to tell you to load your second color in. So we are going to go to our Cricut and pull out our sour apple pen. And then we are going to load in our pink color. You always want to make sure that click. You always want to make sure when you are loading in your markers that you hear that click. Now, if you do not have Cricut pens, one thing that you may have to do if you are working with like Crayola pens is you may have to open up your clamp. But if you are working with Cricut pens, you don't have to just wait for the click and then hit play. Once it is done, we're going to unload that and then we can go overhead now, as you can see, this still drew the green part inside where the green and the pink mix, but one way that you can keep that from happening or just remind yourself 
you could start with this pink and everything that connects to this pink leaf you will embroider that first that way you can come back in here and add in your little green touches after you're finished so once that has once that has finished drawing all you're going to do you are going to take it off of your mat we are going to grab a pair of scissors and we are just going to trim around the outside of our design and then it will be ready to place on your garment. So I'm going to show you how to place it on your garment. As you can see, I already have this on here, but I'm going to show you how you can. This is where you're going to basically use um, your own judgment your own creativity, how you want to place things. But we are going to take the back off of our stick and stitch. And then this side is what is going to attach, what's going to lay down on your fabric. So if you want your leaves pointing up, I think it would be cute to, for them to be on the side. Obviously this design was a little bigger than this one. So if I were to do a smaller design, I would probably do it on the side here. Um, or if you wanted to do it on the back portion, you can do that. Just know if you do it on the back through the pocket, um, you are going to want to make sure it's going to be hard to go through both layers of denim here at this pocket. So you may have to come in toward the back and just go through this single layer of denim, which may not be for a beginner that may be more of once you have mastered embroidery, that may be more of an advanced thing that you can work on. But for a beginner, that's why we started on the front. So you will place your design where you want it. You're just going to lay it down. And then you are going to choose your hoop. Now this hoop is, I probably could have gone down a size. This is actually a eight inch embroidery hoop. So I probably could have gone down to a seven for this size. For this size I couldn't, I had to have an eight inch. So it, the size of your embroidery hoop is going to depend on the size of your garment of clothing and the size of your design. So how to place this on, you are going to put your hoop up through the bottom of your garment and then you would lay the top piece down. This screws and unscrews. So you're gonna lay this top piece down, pull it apart, and then lay it over top of the bottom piece. So with this, you need to make sure that you are not working around the pockets because if the pockets, if there is any little bit of extra fabric when you are laying your embroidery hoop down, it's going to be a little harder to get it on. So make sure this goes on push it down and around, and then we're just going to tighten this up. And then from there, you can pull your fabric tight. Normally it pulls it pretty tight. The hoop itself pulls your fabric fairly tight, so you a lot of times don't have to come back in and tighten it. But then you are going to be ready to start embroidering. And I'm going to show you our stitch on this half of our design. Once we have our design, I'm now going to teach you just this basic back stitch that we're going to be doing to create this. So, when you are starting embroidery, you need to have, tie your ends off. Now I'm gonna put, probably put two or three knots in the end, just because with this one specifically, we will be washing these blue jeans and I definitely do not want this knot to come undone. So normally I do two, but today I'm definitely gonna be doing three. You could even do four if you really wanted to. That's gonna be totally up to you. So now that we've got three knots in there, we've got a pretty good size piece of embroidery floss. We are going to thread our needle. Now this is something that if you are really good, you can do this yourself, or you can use a needle threader if you your eyesight is not the best, so what you would do with a needle fader is you're just going to put this through the eye of your needle. Then you are going to put your embroidery floss through that loop, and then we're just going to pull it through. Now what I like to do 
is I like to pull the end of my floss pretty far down. That way I can keep shortening it, shortening it as I go. So we've doubled our floss and now we're going to start the process of embroidery. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna embroider along this line. So when you come up, you are going to come up on the line. Now you always need to come up through your fabric first. That way your knot is on the inside of your fabric. And then we're gonna just come back down on this line. One thing that tends to help, especially to help not get our embroidery floss tangled, is to try to keep one end in your hand because trust me, it will get tangled very easy and it can be very frustrating when it does that. So once we have our first stitch, we are going to come back up on the line. As you can see, I've gotten, it's gotten tangled up and under here. One thing is when you start out with a lot of embroidery floss, there is a good chance that it's going to get tangled, but that's okay. Just be easy, don't jerk it. So we're gonna untangle this real quick. Pull it on through, and then we're gonna go back right in the middle of this previous stitch and then pull it through. And this is how, what you're going to do, you're going to continue coming up on the line and back down through the middle of the previous stitch until you have completed your design. Now that we have completely finished with our embroidery, we are going to take our hoop off and I'm going to show you guys how this material is water soluble and will come apart or come away. You'll can tear it away once you finish. So once you're done, what you're going to do is you are going to take your article of clothing and you are going to get it wet. And as you can see, this literally starts dissolving as it gets wet. And so you're just gonna go through and pick all of that off. And really and truly, if you wanted to just throw these in the wash once you're done, you can do that. But I wanted you all to see on video how this is just water soluble and just comes away as soon as it gets wet. So once that's done, we're gonna wring this out so we don't get the table so soaked. And then we will throw these in the wash and they will be done. But already you can see how cute these are and how fun for summer this would be. I hope that you all enjoyed that embroidery hack using your Cricut. I know I'm super excited about being able to use all of the makers gonna learn cut files and turning them into the pin function so that I can use them as a template for embroidery. 
If you are new to our channel, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out our website if you are interested in learning all about our education videos and cut files that we have available to you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.